Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of our celebrity video. Our thoughts of Eartha Kid in the last video rekindled thoughts of another star of the 50s and 60s who epitomized the era. Her name, Sandra D. Sporty, cheerful, and squeaky clean, Sandra D. was the star of Gidget, the 1959 film that inspired a flurry of sun and fun surfing videos in the early 1960s. But between Sandra's modeling career to become a Golden Globe award-winning American actress are hillbilly moments. In this video, we will be looking at some of the moments this icon of yesterday is remembered for. But just before we get into it, make sure you watch this video to the end, smash the red button to subscribe, and the bell button to get notified of every single video. Video. Ready to be entertained? Let's get right into it. Her Violent Upbringing Popularly known as Sandra D., she was born Alexandra Zuck on April 23, 1942, in Bayonne, New Jersey. As the only child of John Zuck and Mary Zuck, who met as teenagers at a Russian Orthodox church dance. They married shortly afterward but divorced before Sandra was five years old, and her mother then married a man who had been sexually abusing Sandra and continued to do so after he had married her mother. Going into modeling Having a stunning look, Sandra began modeling at the age of four and appeared in commercials for big brands such as Coca-Cola. At age 12, she was already an established model. In one of her outings with her mother to Park Avenue, Sandra was spotted by an actor and producer, Ross Hunter. And shortly after, offers came rolling in as she became one of the top teen models of America. She suffered from a severe eating disorder. With time, she became more conscious of her appearance and attempted to lose weight and become skinny to align with the stereotypical ways of models. Unfortunately, the table turned the other way. As she began slimming down, almost starving herself to death, she had several skin, hair, and nail-related problems. Having lost weight, her body couldn't digest the food she consumed, hence she was put on medication. According to the actress, she had to learn to eat all over again, an episode that ushered in an immutable eating disorder. Anorexia Nervosa However, despite her bad health, she managed to earn around $75,000 in 1956, $705,000 today, working as a child model in New York, which she used to support herself and her mother after the death of her stepfather. According to sources, Dee's large modeling salary was more than she would later come to earn as an actress. Going into Hollywood Ending her modeling career, Dee moved from New York to Hollywood in 1957. After studying at the Hollywood Professional School, she graduated from University High School in Los Angeles in June 1958. Dee's first on-screen debut was in the 1957 Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer MGM film Until They Sail, directed by Robert Wise. To promote the film, Dee appeared in a December issue of Modern Street in a column by Luella Parsons, who praised the young girl and compared her looks and talent to those of Shirley Temple. Her performance made her one of that year's winners of the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year, Actress. MGM cast her as the female lead in The Reluctant Debutante, with John Saxon as her romantic co-star, the first of several films they made together. In 1957, she provided the voice for The Snow Queen. But despite her newfound success, Dee continued to struggle with anorexia nervosa, which led to her kidneys temporarily shutting down. Rise to Stardom Dee's third film for Hunter had the biggest impact on her acting career. In 1959, she acted opposite Lana Turner in debut movie Imitation of Life. The film quickly became a wild box office success, grossing over $50 million, Universal Pictures' highest grossing film in history at the time, and made Dee a household name. She was subsequently loaned to Columbia Pictures to play the titular role in the 1959 teenage beach comedy Gidge, which was a solid hit, helping spawn the beach party genre and leading to two sequels, two television series, and two television movies. Time for Romance Dee married her come September co-star Bobby Darin in 1960. The following year, on the 16th of December, she delivered their son, Dodd Mitchell Darin. However, trouble began six years after their marriage. By 1967, the couple divorced and Bobby remarried the next year. Their separation left Sandra depressed, and with the death of Bobby Darin in 1973, she could hardly focus on her career. Life isn't fair. By the end of the 1960s, after her separation from Bobby, Dee's career saw a drastic decline and she was dropped by Universal Pictures. In a 1967 interview with Roger Ebert, Dee reflected on her experience in the studio system and on the ingenuine image that had been foisted on her, which she found constricting. Dee's later years were marked by poor health, 
and she became a self-described recluse after retiring from acting. She battled anorexia nervosa, depression, and alcoholism for many years. She quit drinking altogether after being diagnosed with kidney failure in 2000, attributed to years of heavy drinking and smoking. She never made it alive. After suffering from major complications from existing kidney disease, she passed away at the age of 62 on the 20th of February 2005. She is buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery at Hollywood Hills. Legacy Sandra Dee was nominated for several awards during the early years of her career, and she won the Most Promising Newcomer Female in 1958 at the prestigious Golden Globe Awards. In 1959, she won the Top Female New Personality at the Golden Laurel Awards, and was also nominated the Top Female Star and Top Female Comedy Performance from 1960 to 1967. Though she didn't come to the height of her career, Sandra remained a pop culture touchstone with a name and image that live in the hearts of men. Like what you watched? Let us know your thoughts about the ingenuous actress in the comments below. And to be the first person to get notified of our upcoming clips, smash the subscribe button for interesting celebrity videos.